Fellow Americans, stop dragging your feet. Wear kitties when you're going to go out on a date. Look great. But do you know your feet need a little love? Kitty knows. What an agonizing, enterprising, hard kind of day you spend working overtime. You. Be a bit small. You. When, when you shop, you need shoes for it all. I say comfort and style. If you're young at heart or young enough to remember, come to Kitty and explore. We are in the Hawthorne Plaza here in Hawthorne, California, just on the border of the city of Los Angeles. So we're no longer in the city of Los Angeles, but that's okay, because it's LA County. Uh, we are here today, <laughs> we're here today because this mall opened in 1977, closed in 1999, and has sat dormant for 15 years. Uh, it hasn't been knocked down, it's still pretty much in its original form, and we thought we'd go inside and see what it looks like. We, we did, we saw some security guards earlier, so we're trying to avoid being seen. We're not here to do anything, no, we're not trying to do damage or anything, we just want to see. And, um, trying to figure out a way in right now. The city of Hawthorne was once a solid middle class suburb post-World War II. There were lots of good middle-class jobs at companies like Hughes Aircraft, as well as other aerospace companies based in the Southland. In 1950, 16,000 people called Hawthorne home. By 1960, that number had doubled to over 33,000 people. Over the course of the next decade, 20,000 people would move to Hawthorne, bringing the total population to 53,000 people. With that kind of growth, it makes sense why someone would want to open an 800,000 square foot indoor shopping mall to tap into that expendable income. This mall was built by Charles Korber Associates. And as I said, it opened in 1977. 20 years earlier, 1956, Southdale Mall in Minnesota opens. And that was the first indoor shopping mall in America. 
an architect by the name of Victor Gruen designed that indoor shopping mall. This was a, he was a staunch socialist who escaped Vienna in 1938 to get away from Hitler's Austria, came to America, started in retail design, and then translated his socialist ideas into retail architecture. So he saw the indoor shopping mall as this communal space where beauty and commerce sort of intersect. You can come here, you can see fountains and enjoy plants and do some of your shopping. And I think it's interesting for us to contextualize this mall within the idea of the sort of uh, utopian shopping, shopping experience and just try and again see that end point of you draw out this, this idea of communal shopping, can it sustain itself and can communities support it? Spend enough money. The growth Hawthorne saw during the 40s, 50s, and 60s turned out to be a blip rather than an upward trend. From 1970 to 1980, Hawthorne grew only by 5.9%, adding just 3,000 people to the city. Hawthorne Plaza opened in 77. Not only did it have to establish itself as a retail destination, but it had to do so in the shadow of what was at that time the country's largest indoor shopping mall, Del Amo Mall, which was literally just a few miles south down in Torrance. So we've just made it outside of the mall. We're back in the original parking structure. And I have to say, it was amazing in there, but I hope that our images can make you feel as if you've been there because it is so dangerous in there. I mean, obviously there's asbestos, you could get fined, you could get arrested. Um, so I just hope the images that we've created today uh, will allow you to virtually explore the Hawthorne Plaza Mall for how much longer it's gonna you know, be here. May get knocked down tomorrow, probably not, um, but it's at least worth a drive around. You can drive around and kind of scope it out from the outside. So with that, I'll say thanks for watching.